studying clinical relevance of uh, hormone testing. There are different body fluids that people use. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Nort talked about that. There's serum and plasma. <clears throat> There's urine, saliva, capillary, whole blood, which is finger stick, as well as um, uh, heel stick that most of you probably know that, that kids uh, have testing done. In saliva, serum, uh, plasma, blood spot, and urine, there are limitations. In saliva, basically the only kind of hormones you can test in saliva would be steroids uh, because the hormones that end up in saliva are very small and they're very nonpolar, they're greasy, they're created from cholesterol and they, they zip through the, the acinar ducts of the salivary gland and end up in saliva. So there's a free diffusion of those hormones into saliva. So it's a great way to look at the bioavailable level of hormone when you're measuring salivary levels. Serum and uh, plasma and blood spot, you pretty much open up to all the different things that are flowing in the bloodstream. So you can do many different kinds of tests. The limitations of that might be that you're not really looking at the bioavailable level because there's a lot of blood binding proteins that are present there that hold on to those uh, steroids or other kinds of proteins or thyroid hormone that don't allow it to, to enter the tissue. We heard uh, in the last lecture about intracellular levels. So um, some, some of these binding proteins will, will only allow a certain amount of that uh, uh, hormone to enter tissues. For example, for steroids, it's only about 1 to 3 percent of the total amount that's circulating in the bloodstream will actually move out of the bloodstream into, uh, into the tissues, and that's thought to be reflective of what we're seeing in saliva. Uh, urine is a, is a good matrix for looking at, Dr. Nort gave a lecture, and it's a good matrix for looking at, at metabolites of steroids, somewhat with uh, the native steroids, but there are some limitations with that. There are a few other peptide hormones like LH and FSH that will end up in urine, and you can use that for testing, but most of the big peptides, you know, the TSH and uh, insulin and other kinds of hormones you're not going to be able to measure in urine. So these are the, these are the limitations that we're faced with, uh, with measuring things in different body fluids. So let's first look at hormone testing in serum and, uh, and plasma. As I said before, there's a wide range of different hormones that are available. Uh, I like it because there's automated methodology. You know, we do serum testing. We use, a, we use a Siemens Emulite, and I call it my monkey machine because we can get the serum sample and we put it in the machine. And as long as the technician has calibrated it properly, I can come by and push a button and, and the machine starts out and does everything for me. So I love that. It's not as com complex and complicated. Uh, uh, it's automated methodology. It, you know, it's covered by most insurance co uh, companies. And most people are familiar with the levels and ranges that you have in a, in a serum sample. <clears throat> Some of the disadvantages of uh, this kind of testing is that uh, it's invasive. It's a sharp needle in the arm. can be stressful, inconvenient to the patient, requires a phlebotomist. Uh, Processing the specimen requires centrifugation, and there are biohazards involved, not only in the, the nurse or the physician that, that's collecting the sample, but also the people in the laboratory that receive the sample if it's got hepatitis or AIDS or something like that. Uh, so there are a number of different disadvantages that you can look at. Um, so um, when you look at uh, blood spot samples, uh, Here's one of the papers that we published on, on blood spot hormone testing in, in urine. Um, it, it has advantages of it being non-invasive. It's a simple collection procedure. Uh, it measures the total daily output of steroids. And, and Dr. Nort, I think, did a very good job of describing uh, urinary uh, testing. Uh, and it does measure this, the metabolites. And it's covered by most insurance uh, carriers. It tends to be more cumbersome uh, in that it requires a 24-hour collection. Um, it measures total excreted hormone metabolites. So basically, you're measuring what's, what's being left over, uh, and you're measuring metabolites. You're not measuring the active hormone, the proximate hormone that actually links up with receptor and, uh, and moves that receptor into the, into the genome and uh, stimulates whatever it's going to do. Um, as I said, it's restricted to mostly steroid hormones. Um, so you have, if you look on the, the right-hand column, those are the restrictions. So um, 
with, with urine testing. Uh, also, you can, you can look at metabolites of, of, um, of different steroids. So this is just throughout a menstrual cycle. It's a very nice way of looking at the steroid metabolites of the, of the menstrual cycle. Uh, you're looking at LH and FSH in both uh, uh, young premenopausal and older, older uh, po uh, perimenopausal women. Uh, and the bottom two, you're looking at, at estrogen metabolites versus progesterone metabolites. So you get the same kind of pattern that you would see. Um, but that would require, you have to realize that this, this came from, you know, uh, 40 or 50 women that were collecting 24-hour urine. So you can imagine each one of those points was a 24-hour urine. So it's a lot of urine collection in order to, to make that happen. Hormone testing in saliva, um, if you can spit, you can, you can do a saliva sample. And some people don't do a very good job of that. Some people have a very dry mouth. The older you get, you know, the drier your, your mouth's going to get and you, you have problems of, of spitting. So.